Hello and welcome. Today I'm standing at one of my favorite places. It is the confluence of the Motuava and the Marta Viswa rivers. Uh, but instead of looking at me, I'm going to turn the camera around, you look at the view, and I shall tell you what I think of this prisoner swap with Russia. Now, prisoner swaps, in my opinion, on as a general rule, are not a good idea unless you're swapping like for like so a POW swap for example does make sense uh, the problem with this one is it's not a like for like and this is something that goes deep into Kremlin history it's something with a very long tradition I can recall that when I was small, I was uh, in my uh, early teens, I used to write stories. And in one of my stories, there was a case with a prisoner swap, something rather similar. There was a, uh, a Soviet agent, a killer, and who was swapped for a tourist that was picked up on the streets of Moscow. And um, this even, I have a sort of a personal history about this. I think it was in 1964 there was a British uh, person, he was in his early 20s, Gerald Brooke. He was uh, arrested in Moscow and he was swapped for Soviet agents. I knew Gerald Brooke. I would consider him to be a friend. I haven't seen him for many, many years, but he was a professor of Russian language where I studied. I think it was 1985. And there was a uh, deal whereby Ronald Reagan negotiated the exchange of two people for a Soviet agent. And one of the, the uh, there was one who was a, um, a Soviet refusenik, and the other one was an American. I think the American's name was um, Daniel. That's off the top of my head. I bumped into Gerald. The day after it happened, he was in one in the street, Wardour Street, I think it was, if I remember rightly. But anyway, we had a talk for 10, 15 minutes and I talked about the situation. He might even have brought the whole thing up with me, um, but obviously I knew uh, what, what had happened before. In fact, I recognised his name on my very first day at uh, the place where I studied and it was on the door. So just the same as that person who was in Russia. Now, the problem is this, is if we, uh, our side, West, uh, the civilised side, exchanges um, not like for like, this only gives the green light for uh, Russian murderers to come here to kill anybody they like even if they get arrested, in the unlikely event of getting arrested, then a, a journalist or something like that is pulled off the street in Moscow, put on trial on, on, on trumped up charges, and then there is a swap. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's only encouraging more killers to actually come here. This makes the world more unsafe. Now, so it's very rare that I can find myself actually agreeing with Donald Trump. Although at the same time, I'd have to point out the deals he did with the Houthi, Houthis and the Taliban were even worse. Although, in all fairness, uh, there's um, less probably danger from Houthis and Taliban on the streets of London or Salisbury or wherever it may be. Therefore, um, in my opinion, I'd like to ask people how they would feel. Because the question would be, yep, yeah, how would you feel if it was one of your relatives? Yes, that is absolutely true. How would I feel if it were one of my relatives? I would be overjoyed that they were released. I would be really thanking those who were um, involved in it. And uh, I would have been terrible if it were one of my relatives who were arrested. But at the same time, I'd like to ask this question, I've heard nobody mention this one. How would you feel if it was one of your relatives who were murdered, the murderer was arrested, and then was released after a few months to go on and do it again? And so this is where the problem lies. Now, in this case, obviously I don't want to, I really don't want to put my opinion upset those who are overjoyed at the moment, probably in any case, they won't be seeing this video, but there will be plenty of people um, who uh, 
have been in a situation where their own relatives were killed and the murderers get away with it. So uh, that is what I feel. Um, and I think what... I also have to state this, is I am not an armchair person who just sort of sits and passes a judgment uh, from the safety of my own home. I go to places which are dangerous and from time to time. I have been to Russia very many times. In fact, I was invited not, uh, during the war uh, in 2022. And uh, of course I didn't go because uh, I feel what the consequences might be. Uh, recently, the Belarusian government has opened its um, borders for tourists. And uh, this is something I've wanted to go to Belarus for ages and ages. And uh, previously it was so complicated that um, it was super, super difficult. But now the situation is this, is that, okay, you get a 30-day visa, and I, th I think it's done on the borders, no even compulsory exchange, no nothing. Uh, but, the, you know, I was on the border not so long ago, a few days ago, well, well a couple of weeks ago, uh, or close to the border. I didn't go because the risk is, is, is really absolutely enormous. Um, and therefore, that would be only my fault. And so there. So... I'm sorry to actually, for those who feel uh, really great about this, but to me, I, I, I mean, I'm really glad that some of these um, people are free. I mean, Mr. Karamos is one of my personal heroes. He knew he was going to get arrested. And he said he's gone back to Russia because he has to fight. In any case, I really, really sympathize for that. Uh, but, but the situation's not... Uh, one where one can actually do these exchanges in my opinion so uh, anyway I mean Trump said he'd get them out for nothing of course he would have got them out for it but I mean that isn't the uh, we know perfectly well uh, in his experience that he didn't do it and um, his his deals were even worse as I just mentioned now the question I find most interesting of all those, why did Putin agree to this? And could it be that, you know, getting a killer out, he needs that killer to go and kill somebody else? Well, I think that person would probably be watched rather closely now. Maybe it was something to bolster his own support. But why didn't he wait until November? I mean, uh, if Trump is likely to be, or it wouldn't be November, it would be January, could have given his client uh, Trump a great victory and um, doing it say the day after um, the inauguration assuming he won of course why didn't he wait and that is the question which I am most curious about I can't quite get to the bottom of that one and so maybe maybe there's something he knows that uh, we don't. Anyway, if you've got any opinions on this, please put them uh, below. Uh, this here, I'll just show you this where I'm now. So this is the um, Dead Vistula River comes around here, around there, and there's the port. There's the shipyard, Gdansk shipyard, and which is on an island actually. This bit here, so, and the, where we started off from, that is the River Motuava, which runs through the centre of Gdansk so and here we have a ter terrain land which was once part of the because it's all being done up it's taken years and years to do it but I can remember and this is something related to the port when I was here 15 years ago and filmed it but you weren't allowed to walk down here then anyway so somebody's going to come along and take this and probably build something on it uh, apartments I'd imagine So, thanks for watching, all the best, and bye from me in Gdansk.